The new bidirectional impulse turbine is the ideal addition to the thermoacoustic Stirling engine. Unlike the piston drive used previously, it is virtually wear-free and can be easily produced by anyone with a 3D printer. This combination makes my goal of simple and reliable personal energy production from renewable resources possible for everyone. In the last video I showed the basics and the manufacture of the turbine wheels. The remaining components are now being completed and the first turbine test runs will now follow. After removing the support structures and deburring, the ball bearings can be pressed directly into the guide vanes and the shaft can be glued to the rotor. The nose cones direct the acoustic pressure waves to the turbine blades. The electrical generator can be housed in the rear cone. The front housing cover is screwed airtight to the Stirling engine with a pipe thread. The middle connector is made from a plexiglass tube to get a good view of the rotor. This part will also be 3D printed later. The connections are sealed with O-rings. The rear casing cover also has a pipe thread to allow universal mounting at a later date. When fitting the parts, it is important to ensure that the dimensions are accurate so that the rotor runs as smoothly as possible with as small gaps as possible. You may need to carefully grind down the outside diameter of the turbine wheels. I try to simplify the thermoacoustic Stirling engine as much as possible so that it can be built by anyone also without a well-equipped workshop. At the same time, the acoustic performance has to be increased significantly to allow a sensible use of energy. Over the last few weeks I have tried many different modifications and gradually increased the power. By adjusting the length of the inertance and compliance, it is possible to amplify the thermoacoustic oscillations and minimize the harmful streaming. With all these measures, I have slowly got the turbine turning, but using it with even the smallest generator is out of the question. Nevertheless, for me, this is a success and proof of functionality. The turbine is probably too oversized for the weak Stirling engine. I still believe in the potential of the thermoacoustic Stirling engine as a do-it-yourself micro-cogeneration unit for everyone. However, in order to achieve a necessary significant increase in power, a greater amount of working gas must pass through a higher temperature differential. I will continue to experiment with the existing thermoacoustic engine to gain experience. At the same time, I am planning a larger version with significantly improved heat exchanges and much more thermoacoustic power. This new engine will hopefully be able to drive a small generator with a turbine to produce measurable electrical power for the first time. What do you want to see most? More simplifications to rebuild or rather performance increases for power generation? Has anyone reprinted the turbine parts yet? Please let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.